progress, but I still think we need to practice it one more time. It needs to sound angelic, splendiferous, phenomenal, absolutely excellent. But we have practiced it 12 times. Maybe we aren't supposed to sound angelic. <sighs> Don't be silly. We've only practiced it 10 times. And I promise you, by the time we are done, we are done, it will sound melodious. Why is it so important that we sound good? I mean, we're kids. No one expects it to sound good. Yeah. I heard my dad tell my mom that his expectations are low. That way he can always tell me, good job and not be lying when he said it. <laughs> Young ladies, this is our Christmas performance. It's the most important one of the whole year. We have to do our very best no matter what it is. But do you think Jesus is going to like what our very best is? Because my brother said he's sure even Jesus thinks our harmonies are terrible. <laughs> my brother said that when we start singing, he's pretty sure it makes all the real angels fly away really fast. <laughs> Enough of that. You girls will be wonderful in the Christmas pageant. I'm certain of it. Well, honestly, I don't really want to be in the pageant, but my mom is making me. Why wouldn't you want to be in it? I loved pageants when I was your age. It's boring. I know the Christmas story. It's always the same. Mary, Joseph, baby Jesus, wise men, shepherds, blah, blah, blah. I agree. It's a little boring. There's not much to the story. Girls, this is the most incredible story in the whole Bible. I know that there aren't that many verses, but there are enough to make us wonder and ponder and think. God became a man that night. He did it for us. For you and for me. This is part of the salvation story. What do you mean? Wonder and ponder and think. Think about what exactly? Well, think about Mary and Joseph and the shepherds and the innkeeper. What life was really like for them. I bet Mary was super excited. She's going to have a perfect baby. My mom would love that. <laughs> well, let's take a break from singing and think about the Christmas story. And let's start by thinking about Mary as her life is about to dramatically change. Mary, I'm just so jealous that you're engaged to Joseph. Why on earth are you jealous? Wait, do you like Joseph? No, I just want to be engaged. I mean, I was born to be married, so I'm just really bummed that my parents haven't arranged anything for me yet. That's because you talk too much. You know that I want a wife who talks too much. Well, you do talk a lot, but just be patient. In the right time, a match will be made for you. Are you going to have kids right away? Like seven or eight, one right after the other? Lydia, there's nothing you won't say, is there? No, my mother says I haven't developed the virtue of respecting other people's privacy yet. <laughs> well, we probably will have children at some point. Although, my little brother is a strong-willed kid. So, I'm actually a little scared of having a son. Oh, you're such a nice person that you'll end up having a perfect little baby. Don't be silly. Nobody can be perfect. But Joseph is a good man, so I'm sure between the two of you, the two of you, you guys will have some awesome kids. Enough talk about babies! <laughs> I'm not even married yet! I mean, we're putting the cart before the horse, aren't we? I can't have a baby unless I'm married, right? Absolutely. <gasps> Husbands, then babies. So let's go talk about this upcoming wedding, shall we? Ooh, yes! I love weddings! Can I be in it? Can I be moral support? Can I be a maid to the bride? Like a bridesmaid? Is that even a thing? <laughs> oh, so you see, Mary was just a young girl not planning to have a baby. But she got to be the mother of Jesus. Yeah, what was hard about that? Nothing about the entire thing was easy, but sometimes hard things are the best things. <coughs> All right, let's see. What's next on my list of things to do? I suppose I should probably mend some skirts and bake some bread. Getting so good when the Lord is with you. Please, who are you? Do not be afraid, Mary. You have fun playing here with God. You'll have a son and you'll name him Jesus. Is this real? Am I dreaming? Oh, it's real, all right. 
He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High, and he will reign forever in the house of Jacob and of his kingdom, and there will be no end. I'm sorry, I do not understand. How is this going to happen to me? I'm not even married yet, and, 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 I'm still a virgin! The Holy Spirit will be with you, and the power of the Lord Most High will overshadow you. And the child will be called Holy, and the Son of the Most High, for nothing is impossible with God. Alright, may it happen according to your word. Oh boy, is this real? Am I dreaming? Can this really be happening to me? What will my family think? What will the people of Nazareth think? Oh, and Joseph. <laughs> what will Joseph think when he finds out? How am I even going to tell him? Oh, no, 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 no. Well, so you see, if you think about it, this was crazy. She was pregnant, she wasn't married yet, and her story was a very difficult one to understand. Who would have believed she had seen an angel? I get it. Maybe the story feels simple for us because we've heard it so many times. Probably. It seems normal because we hear the story every Christmas. But this was a big deal. It was the biggest deal. So it was hard for Joseph too? Oh yes, it was definitely a big deal for Joseph as well. <laughs> seen a ghost. Not a ghost, an angel, <coughs> although it's all a little hazy. Jeremiah was just messing with you. You could tell us what's really going on. But I'm telling the truth. I had a dream that was, it was so real, but my head is so confused. No, I, I'm sure of it. I know exactly what I have to do. Deep down in my heart, that is. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. We're guys, we're friends, but we're guys. So don't be throwing that heart word around too much. <laughs> us guys don't know how to deal with that. Malachi, stop talking and let Joseph spit it out. I want to see where he's going to go with this whole angel story. Go ahead, Joseph. Start at the beginning. Or start with the angel. Okay, so for starters, I talked to an angel in my dream last night. Okay, and why'd the angel come and talk to you? Yeah, did he give you an important message, message to share or an important mission to take? If you're going on a mission, I'm going with you. I've always wanted to go on a mission. There's a message, and there's a mission. You guys may not know it yet, but Mary is great with child. Look, I know Mary's younger than you and all, but you shouldn't go around calling her a great child. Not great for the relationship. <laughs> no, I don't think he calls her a child. I think he meant she is great with children, like she'll be a good mother to her kids one day. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, she is great with child. Oh, great with child. Whoa. Yeah, and I was ready to divorce her quietly. That's when the angel of the Lord came to me. And what exactly did the angel say to make you change your mind? Uh, that's where it gets a little complicated. Well, we have been talking about dreams with angels, so I think it already got complicated. <laughs> well... The angel said to take Mary as my wife and not to be afraid because the baby that's inside her is from the Holy Spirit. Let me get this straight. An angel in a dream came up, told you that your great with child fiance is going to have God's baby? Exactly. Yes. Oh, good. You get it. He said that it's going to be a boy and his name will be Jesus and that he's going to be the fulfillment of the prophecy. Ah, the P word. Sorry, I've never paid much attention to the prophecy readings. Way too confusing for my brain. So, what does the prophecy say exactly? It says that a baby, a virgin, shall have a son and his name will be Emmanuel. And you think Mary is the one the prophecy is about? Man, that's a lot to process, and I thought that my life was complicated. <laughs> so, what are you going to do? Well, the angel said to take Mary as my wife, and God told me not to be afraid, so... I guess we're still getting married. People will talk. People. 
Yeah, but I decided I'm not going to act according to other people's opinions. I'm going to do what God tells me to. When we read the story, it sounds so simple. An angel told Joseph to still take Mary as his wife. But do you girls think it was that simple? I don't, and now I want to know what their conversation was like after that. Whose conversation? Mary and Joseph's. I wonder what they said to each other. I can't even imagine. <laughs> Wait a minute, Joseph. You mean to tell me that an angel talked to you too? Yes, he came to me in my dream, Mary. He explained everything. Oh, that is so good because I hadn't quite figured out how to explain the angel part to you. I don't know how to explain any of this, and I have no idea why God else is doing this. You know what? I've decided I don't need to know the why. God's plans can be trusted. I am choosing not to be afraid. This is a huge responsibility, and I don't, don't really feel worthy of any of it. Well, it'll be okay. God will be with us, and he'll help us as we care for Jesus, his son. Which, as I say that out loud, doesn't that just sound confusing? Confusing, but comforting. So let's stick with the comforting part. <laughs> I do feel bad for you, though. You're such a good man, and I know people are talking about me. It's all right. I choose to be obedient. Now, I have to be going, but it's not every day a man finds a girl who can talk to angels, too. So it's probably a sign we should stick together. <laughs> Why didn't they understand? He was obeying God. Put yourself, put yourself in the place of the people of Nazareth. Do you think you would have understood? I want to think I would have tried. Dear God, I am your humble servant, but this path that I'm on is hard and not everyone understands it. Sometimes it hurts. Please help me to be gracious and forgiving. Oh, hello, Abigail. Hello, Lydia. Hello, Mary. Are you doing well? Yes, I am, Lydia. Thank you. By the way, I didn't see you at the wedding. Were you ill? No, something came up. Oh. Well, um, you really have to stop by once the baby is born. I'd love for you to meet him. I, I don't know. I might be busy. Might be, might be getting married myself. Anyways, I have to go. Bye. You have to forgive her. She doesn't know how to act. That's a lot of people in Nazareth these days. Well, it's a small place and people talk. Well, people gossip. With the census, Joseph and I will be going to Bethlehem for a couple days. It will be nice to get away from all the stares and silent faces when I walk by. You're traveling to Bethlehem, huh? Will you be sure to wait until you have the baby until you get back here? And forgive Lydia. I do forgive her. In fact, I'm finding it easier and easier to forgive people these days. Maybe it has something to do with this sweet baby inside of me. thought that the next part of the story was room. How could no one have room for them? I mean, Mom! Yeah, I mean, couldn't the innkeepers tell she was pregnant? Seriously, who turns away a tired couple about to have a baby? Ah, it sounds like you girls are finding the story a little more interesting. I'd like to meet the innkeeper who let them stay in the stable and tell him it they should have stayed in the inn, and there was no room in his room. <laughs> well, it's easy to judge when we don't know what it was like to walk in his shoes. Barnabas, I can't bake bread fast enough to keep up with all the people in our inn. Okay, so maybe this is just a helpful suggestion, but maybe you should be baking more bread instead of complaining to me. 
Okay, well don't keep an attitude with me. You're the one who decided to pack every person you could possible into every tiny space. We run an inn. It's called an inn. We pack people in. <laughs> That's why it's called an inn. What else would you have me do? Turn them away. Send them to Bartholomew or Peter's inn. But they're all full too. Every inn in this stinking town is full. The census has brought everyone to Bethlehem. Every, every part of Bethlehem is full. Okay, so I know it's tiring. I know we've had a long day. But most of the travelers are here now, so it'll all be over soon. Well, I am weary, and, well, I just won't want you to have anyone else come in here tonight, okay? All right. I mean, the only space that I have left is our room, but I don't think I'll be giving that away. I'm yet. <laughs> so, you promise? I promise. In fact, that would be the first person that I firmly turn away. Just watch me in action. <laughs> Hi, my name is Joseph, and this is my wife, Mary. We are hoping that you had a place in the inn for us, for we have traveled a long ways. <laughs> I am so sorry. I am so, 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 so very sorry. So sorry. But I just don't have any room left at all. Not anywhere, nowhere in this inn. I have no room. I am so sorry. Yeah, they're gonna have to go find another. I'm, I'm so sorry. Right? <laughs> I don't think so. This woman is about to have a baby. So, how could you just turn her away so hard coldly? <laughs> I thought you just said. Oh, hush, hush. I am sure I said, no matter how many people come, <laughs> our inn is never full. <laughs> I don't remember you saying that ever. <laughs> not today. Not ever. I think I need to get my hearing checked. Again. <laughs> well, I believe that was more of a paraphrase, but that's the heart of it. Anyway, so where should we put these two? Please, ma'am, we've been all over town, and all of the inns were full. We didn't dare hope that you'd have any room for us. But the Lord brought us here anyway. Did you hear that? The Lord brought them here to our inn. We gotta do something. Pablo, Pablo, you have to come quickly. Okay, hold, hold on a second, dear. Uh, Papa's working on something important, something unexpected. Oh, but Papa, she is being a neighbor's girl, Papa. This is being the whole world. Okay, just, just give me a moment. Uh, let, let me take care of this, and then Papa will be over to the stable to see this lamb. You said the stable. Yes, Papa, at the stable. You need to come see it. It's so cute. Well, I think uh, if you're willing to be creative here, think outside the box. <laughs> Think outside the inn. I think I'm gonna have a place for you. Uh, any space will do. My wife desperately needs rest. All right, just follow me. Uh, forgive me for the smells, but I think uh, the place I have in mind might have a little more privacy than the inn. Whatever you have, we're grateful to receive. My wife just needs rest. So you see. If you think about it, it was a blessing to be born in a stable than an overcrowded, filled inn. I never thought about it that way before. I don't know. Sometimes I'm afraid. May I go down there? It was quieter and more private, and they got to meet Jesus without anyone else wanting to see him. They had a special moment with their baby before God sent the shepherds to meet him. Right, the shepherds. What would it have been? What have? It, what would it have been like to be them? I don't think the town people value us enough. They don't know how hard it is to be a shepherd. I can't count how many times we chased away wild animals that want to eat lambs. But does anybody say thank you? No, we don't do it to be thanked. We do it because it's our job. Well, tonight on the job, I'm going to sleep and I'm going to sleep like a rock. 
No, you're not. We're gonna keep watch all the foxes sheep like we always do. Well, we're gonna think about sleeping then. We're gonna be awake on the outside while sleeping on the inside. <laughs> what does that even mean? I don't know. <laughs> hey, what do you call a really quiet sheep? Why are you always making jokes? You think jokes make everything better. So what's the answer? I don't know. Asleep? No, a uh, sheep. <laughs> That's lame. Hey, what about this one? How do sheep greet each other at Christmas? They say Merry Christmas to you. I don't get that one. What's Christmas? I've never heard of it. <laughs>
my king. Lord of lords, prince of peace, mighty God is he. Oh, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, Savior and my king. Lord of lords, prince of peace, mighty God is he. Where are my other people?